Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless each and every one of you. We're going to open the altar area up today. I'm going to ask the youth to come down and anybody that desires to just come down and just worship freely. And you can worship freely right where you're at, but I just like opening the altar area up. It's just fun. Hallelujah. Saints, this is the day that the Lord has made. How many of you have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it this morning? We're so grateful you're here. Let's all just sing this verse together, then we'll start the song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
giving him glory for what you've not yet seen manifest but you know it's on its way because you've believed God you're a believer not a doubter hallelujah thank you father thank you father thank you father Oh, this is the 
has made me free. so fast. I mean, we're, come on, let's give him praise. Make some joyful noise to the Lord, somebody. Come on, make yourself give him praise. I praise you, Lord. I, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for you brought me out. You brought me out of a miry pit, Lord. You brought me out of death. Hallelujah. Come on. Ah. Uh, he brought us out of poverty, amen. Brought you out of the curse. Come on. Brought you out, cleansed you of your old false demonic identity, somebody. Huh? He brought you out. Somebody shout, he brought me out. He brought me out. <laughs> he brought me out. Couldn't find my way out. He brought you out. Hallelujah. worship him. We give him, yes, yes he's Lord. Hallelujah. Let's everybody on three shout with victorious yeah. vocals. Jesus is Lord on three. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Spirit. 
spirit, in the spirit, from the spirit. Come on.
Welcome to Heartland Church. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to wait a minute before I do something that I need to, to get done. We, uh, first time guests, we want to welcome you. It's an honor to have you here. Brother Ty, are, are, are we Facebooking again? Okay. So. First thing I want you to do, if you've got a phone and you're on Facebook and you're connected to Heartland Church, I would like for you to share the live broadcast and then put your phone up. Make sure it's on silent. Don't be, no matter how hard it is to ignore those notifications, 
just for a minute, just for the next however long we're here, you have permission to share and then shut that sucker down. <laughs> Unless it's Jesus on the notification. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I get, you never know. You never know. Uh, we've got a lot going on, folks. We really, really do. And uh, we're awfully thankful that you're a part of all of it. Uh, Renovate Youth pre preparing for camp. And I know it's not until June, but uh, we're making preparations now. Uh, so parents, be sure there's forms. As a matter of fact, there's a form that... Uh, you guys, a waiver that you guys need to get signed, uh, that's not even a part of camp. It's just a part of renovate you. So if you go down, Pastor, before you sit down, I need to ask you to leave the room for a minute. Can you go out there and, can you go out there and stand, with, stand with Bobby for just a minute? Uh, well, I promise it's all good. <laughs> just, just, just for a minute. We're, we're going to have you right back in here because we don't. <laughs> that kind of makes me nervous inside. <laughs> <laughs> Telling the pastor he got a he got a look at him. He's being escorted out. Watch out. He went all the way outside. Thank you all very much. It, we, we are just a, a, a body of givers, and, and it's, a, it's an honor to be hooked up with you guys. It really is. All right, woman to woman. Ladies, you get back-to-back -back experiences. All right, the 24th and the 31st uh, for woman to woman. That's because we're preparing for We're kind of getting things in sync for Easter Sunday. Uh, okay, so you got back-to-back -back opportunities. To that's next Sunday and then in the immediately the following Sunday. Uh, so, ladies, be prepared for that. Uh, 6 to 7.30-ish. Um, and how many of us husbands don't mind the ish? And I, hey, just this late. That's right. Leave the porch light on for 
uh, she'll she'll be home eventually, and she she <laughs> she gonna be on fire when she gets home. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you, sir. Um, oh, and St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, Miss Krista. I got my green. I got my little green button so that those like my wife who don't have green eyes are protected from. <laughs> she's got perpetual safety from uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, <laughs> that's right. Pastor Jody's got. <laughs> that's got to be the greatest comment from the stage I think I've heard in a while. I've got one. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, karaoke is coming up on the 29th. All right. Again, another fundraiser for Renovate Youth and a ton of fun. And there is nothing on our schedule that's going to keep us out that I'm aware of because we've missed the last two. Yeah, so we're, we're excited to be uh, there. It's going to be out in uh, Heart Rock 6 to about 8.30. That's uh, Friday night. Is that right? Friday night? Yeah, 29th. So be, be ready for that, and uh, please be here. Bring somebody with you. You don't have to sing. It's just a lot of fun to get together. How many of you have a good time when we get together? Whether it's this setting or karaoke. I was fixing to bring that up. How many of you, everybody that was here for pothole filling, please stand up. John's already standing. Y'all, we appreciate y'all a bunch and I like the customization of the potholes. That went well. Truly, that's, that's, that's work. And even, even the guys with the torches, you guys look good holding those things. <laughs> oh, man, going by pastor's window. I tell you what, you, I'm just saying, if you, if you walk by pastor's place after dark, Hey, just announce yourself, please. <laughs> Ecclesia, tomorrow night, y'all are coming out to our place. Communicate with Brian and Mandy, and uh, they'll tell you exactly where to go, what time to be there, and uh, we're going to eat and uh, have this little bonfire out back. Looks like the weather's going to be good for a fire, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wear your jacket just in case. Some of us may still be out there in shorts and Hawaiian shirts. I don't know. Um. And birthdays this week. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I tell you what, y'all are in some good company. Josh Johnson celebrating today. Yeah. Happy birthday, Josh. Yes, we love you, sir. <laughs> Tanner Watts celebrates today. There he is. Happy birthday. Celia Drury celebrates this week. We do appreciate her. Philip Rando. Happy birthday, Philip. Shayla Hill celebrates this week. Is she up working? And my wife. <laughs> she was, you go, girl. My wife celebrates this week. My wife and Shayla celebrate together. Yes, ma'am. And last but not least, okay, y'all get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating a birthday this week, our very own Pastor Jason Stoddard. <laughs> Happy birthday, sir. Coming up this week, so that's that's that 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 is exciting. Your birthday's exciting. Glory to God. All right. We are a we're a body of givers. So I pr I pray you have prepared the tithe and the offering. Seeds you're gonna sow. Don't forget renovate youth right there in them buckets. Hey, we, we have emptied buckets recently, haven't we? No? Yes? I don't know. Okay. Well, let's keep filling them suckers. We got rolled coin in there. I like that. Somebody been collecting. And uh, let's not forget 
various ministries that you can sow into. If you want to, Miss Bonnie, what a privilege it is to have you in here this morning, ma'am. Glory to God. Man, we do, we love her and the work that she does. Oh, my goodness. And it's just not very often we get to get, get to have her in service. So uh, that's a blessing. Ecclesia, if you want to sow into children's church for the things that they need. How many of you know when Poppy's place gets built, we're going to need a lot of stuff for our children. So those babies' rooms are going to need to be filled up with all kinds of new new goodies. Renovate Youth, Ecclesia, uh, you, the building fund, um, double digits, absolute double digits had a game day yesterday and it looked like you guys had a had a great time what blessed me was looking in the renovate youth building seeing those pictures and seeing all the games they were able to play in that room kind of spread out and 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 be in there that's all come from your pockets folks from god's lap into your pockets into renovate youth and double digits and in all those areas we were reading earlier in this week in Mark and I don't I don't think this is a stretch uh, Mark 5 where the story of Legion is told and at the end of Legion being delivered from those demons Beginning in verse 18, it says, And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. We talk about our lives being a testimony which really means our relationship with the Lord being a testimony. And I believe that that's what Jesus is telling Legion here. Go home and tell what I've done for you. It's a testimony to the people. In your financial lives, share with people what the Lord does in your life because you're a tither and because you're a giver. You'll know when and who and, and how to share those things. It's not like you run out there and say, you know, in the, in the, in the Walmart checkout line, check line and turn to the guy behind you and say, I'm a tither and uh, I got me this gift card here and uh, yeah, I'm cool. No, it'll, it will come to you. But always remember from whence it came. When we give God the glory outside of this body, people take notice. And when you're living a life and people say, wait a minute, you know, you're, you're working this job and I've got a pretty good idea, good idea that you're not making a lot, a lot of money. How, how do you do the things you do? And I don't know about you, but mine doesn't work out on paper. If I put a natural pencil to it, it it's not supposed to work, but it does. So don't be afraid to give and don't be afraid to share the good news of the blessing on your lives because it's good news and it's for somebody, okay? So let's give. Father, I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, the press down, shaking together and running over. I thank you, Father, for the fruitfulness and the multiplication in our lives. Lord, I thank you that it ministers, Lord, the, the tithe that we freely give, that we cheerfully give, that we, we give out of our love is in honor and a blessing to you. And for all that you do in our lives, Lord Father, and for opportunities that we have to sow seed, Lord Father, that it is a blessing in other people's lives. And they see through us your love in us. Thank you, Father, for your love, your grace, your mercy that's new every day, Lord Father. I thank you, Father, for, Lord, just rhema knowledge from your word. Because the deeper our relationship with you, Lord Father, the more we understand your love for us. 
and we understand your word and how it applies to our lives. And I pray, Lord, that we apply it to our lives. We thank you for your word. It's a gift. It's a tremendous gift. Thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you that we get the privilege and opportunity to sow. And, Lord, as we prepare to receive your word, Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of your spirit in this time. Lord, that in this time, Lord, your Holy Spirit teaches us, reminds us, opens new doors and windows in our lives of rhema understanding and we thank you, Father, that our pastor has prepared for this time, and we have prepared to receive and draw from him this day. And, Father, we thank you that the tithe, the seed, and today's word, Lord Father, will be fruitful, and it will multiply. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Ushers, Pastor Jay, it's all yours, sir. Thank you all for being here today. Thank God we can come together in the midst of spring break. A lot of people still on their vacations, and that's good. I'm glad they're able to. I hope everybody's had a, a good restful one. Oh. Brother Rudy, can I put this in there, please? Thank you, sir. Thank the worship team and the youth team. And that's just a blast, a ball when we do that together. It's, it's sweet and it's holy and it's pure. Sound and media, thank you all for everything. Ushers, detail children's workers, greeters, Heart Rock, Riley's Stop and Shop out there, Riley's Waffle House. I tell you, she runs a tight ship. Boy, I tell you, she's got big Ryan right where she needs him. <laughs> I, I heard her once. She said, pick that trash. And he said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> It is good to be here today with all of you. You have a handout. Looks like something your three-year-old put together, but it'll work. We'll use it. <laughs> the engrafted word. Say that with me. The engrafted word. Let's look at this today. We want to deal with the book of James, the one at the bottom. We're going to deal with that first. Then we're going to glance at something in Proverbs 4. Then we'll end in Joshua 1. But James 1, 21, if you would turn there, please. Lord, we thank you for faith. We thank you that we can reach in to confidence by faith. We thank you for your word. We thank you that where we gather together, in that name that you are there with us, you're present. Your grace is more than enough. Amen. James 1, let's look at verse 21, please, and we're going to read to verse 25. It says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and the overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls now he's writing to born again bible toting spirit filled spirit talking believers brethren and yet he says, lay aside filthiness and the overflow of wickedness. But today I primarily want to deal with this, talking to the believers. How many of you are a believer in here? Yeah, we're talking to the right crowd. Receive with meekness, right here is what we want to deal with today, the implanted 
word which is able to save your souls. Writing to believers. It's able to save your souls. Now he's writing to believers saying their soul needs saving. You ever met a believer that just needed a good soul saving? <laughs> I was, you beat me to it. Sarah said, yeah, me. <laughs> you can be a, a, a believer and still need a good soul scrubbing, a good soul washing, a good, a good, a good solical bathing, a good solical purging. Well, my Bible tell me that everybody be in Christ, everything be new in Christ. They, they never had the T, it's just in Christ. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. That's your spirit man. The same man that was, remember, dead in sin, that's your spirit. God is spirit, the Holy Spirit is spirit. The word of God is spirit. John 6, 63, Jesus said, my words are spirit. You understand that, believers, that this is not a natural book, is it? This is a spirit book. This is your constitution. This is a spirit book, though. These words are spirit. That's why it's alive every day you get into it. That's why it can minister. You can read Jesus wept, and it'll minister one subject to you, and the next season the spirit leads you to that that text again, Jesus wept. He'll hit you from a whole nother angle on a whole nother subject and, and bless you that way. Then you can read Jesus wept the next season. He leads you to it and he might minister complete financial provision out of Jesus wept. Yes, Why? Because the word's alive. It's alive. It's not like, you know, mystery of the green ghost at the library or something. This thing's spirit. You know, Henry Huggins or or Louis L'Amour. My dad had every Louis L'Amour ever made. I mean, Wendy still got his collection. Well, Louis L'Amour, you know, it, it moves the soul, but it doesn't minister to your spirit, and it doesn't have the power to transform your soul. So this is a spirit book. Point at your Bible and just touch it and say that. This is a spirit book. The natural man cannot receive it. But let's look at this again. He's writing to the believer and he says, receive. Say receive. receive. Receive with meekness the implanted word. Now this is real interesting when you slow down here. Receive, take with a teachable spirit the implanted word. It is able to save, deliver, heal, set free your souls. Are you listening to me today? Receive, Lombano, take, take with a teachable spirit. Now let's look at this. The implanted word. So the word is already implanted. I want us to focus on that for a second. The word that you've heard and you've heard and you've heard it and you've heard it and you've sat under it and you've sat under it and you've listened to it and you've listened to it and you've watched it and you've watched it and you've watched it and you've heard it and you've listened to it. It is implanted in you, but there comes a time I have to receive, take that word with a teachableness in that area the area that maybe you've not been open to or been humbled to or teachable to the areas that's not yet working for you that's them areas I had a strength coach tell me he's, this was his words it's, world, it's, it's, it's the strongest gym in the world literally Louis Simmons runs it called West Side Barbell Columbus, Ohio and I called him one day, because I'll just call anybody, you know. What, what can they do, tell you no? I'm just supporting as him. I'm a child of God, man. 
But, but I was a real weakling, and I wanted to get stronger. So I called the best. I always believe in going for the best. You won't reach out to somebody that knows more about it than you if you're prideful. And that's why you don't grow. Is because, you know, you're afraid there's fear working, so you can't ask somebody, My, what if they know more than I do? But anyway, I called him, and, and he said, he said, uh, he said, Jason, he said, listen, find the lifts that you suck at and work at them. There's a reason you suck at them. They break world record. That's all this gym does is break world records. They broke 12 last year. Any gym in the world can tell them, we'll, we'll, take, we'll hold you to a competition in eight weeks. He said, we'll meet you there in two weeks because they always lift at 90% or more. So you never go backwards doing that if you know how to do it, okay? There's a whole lot in that. I'm not here to t talk about the conjugate system. I'm, talk I'm talking a principle, though. <laughs> he said, find the lifts you suck at and work at them. There's a reason you suck at those lifts because you don't work on those lifts. Everybody wants quads, but nobody wants to squat. Huh? Are you here, anybody? Huh? Everybody, everybody... Listen, you don't get a better squat by just squatting. I'm going somewhere with this, okay? We're not going to lift weights in a minute, I don't think. Maybe the Lord wants us all to start lifting weights. I don't know. You don't get a better squat by squatting. You don't get a faster run by just running. You get a better... Your, your quads don't even fail in the squat. Your hips fail in the squat. So you do a lot of hip exercises, and especially really heavy sumo deadlifts to build the hips, and that way your hips quit failing in the squat, and now your squat's gone up because your hips have gotten stronger. One muscle supporting the other. Huh? You want a bigger bench, you better get strong triceps because you, your chest does very little in the bench. Am I right, big Ryan? I mean, look at Ryan. This guy knows what he's talking about. Look. Rhino Ryan. This is Rhino Ryan. <laughs> No, you work heavy lifts on triceps. You get, you, you, get, you get strong triceps, your bench goes up. Well, he said, find the lifts you suck at and work at those. There's a reason you suck at them. I thought, well, that's, he's from Chicago. and not much southern hospitality in that, but it's the truth. How many of you know, will you go here with me? The truth is usually brutal. If you're really open to the truth... It's usually brutal. Well, I ask them what they thought. And this is what they said. You believe they said that? You ask them. <laughs> Take your feelings off next time you want the truth. Huh? Take your thumb out. Come on, saints. He's writing to brethren, and he said, he said, the word is already, it, he said, receive with a teachable spirit the implanted word. He didn't say receive with a teachable spirit and believe God to give you the implanted word. They've been hearing and been hearing and been hearing and been hearing. And he said, listen, take with a teachable spirit the word that is already engrafted into you. Listen to this right quick. Amplified. Receive with a humble spirit the word of God which is implanted. It is implanted, actually rooted in your heart, which is able to save your soul. Are you listening? It is implanted. It's already implanted. But you have to receive, take it with meekness, a teachable, humble spirit. And that's how you get into this thing of growing beyond carnal. You can be a believer and be carnal. Yes, you are saved because you've called on the name of Jesus, but you're going to ruin lots of relationships that God has divinely predestined and ordained for you to experience if you don't know how to grow past carnal. Huh? Listen to me. The strongest voice in your life and for your life is your attitude. It is the prophet 
P-R-O-P-H-E-T. It is the prophetic voice that goes ahead of you. Come on. Your attitude greets me before you do. Everybody say attitude. attitude. I have known people. For whatever that statement's worth, we try to get away from it. Who cares? But there are people whom God has destined, say destined, destined them for this relationship, destined them to be yoked with this one or yoked with this team, yoked with a ministry, yoked with a pastor, yoked with a, this wife, yoked with a husband, yoked for something of betterment to them to bring out the God or dainedness, if you will, out of them, but their attitude ruined the relationships. <laughs> because your attitude gets in the room before you do. Your attitude shakes my hand before you do. I know really all I want to know about you by your attitude before I shake your hand. Are you with me? Attitude can totally ruin the divine appointments of God for your life. There was a man that used to go here many years ago. Thank God God delivered us from him. <laughs> I can't help it. Listen, there's just a couple like that, man. It's just like, oh, Lord. You know, we lived in love and lived in love, and we're still in love, and that door loves open if he wants change. But, Lord, I just thank you that you set us free. Sometimes it's just better once they're gone. Are you with me, anybody? Uh, the door of love's open to anybody that's, that, that is at least 10% willing to change. But when it's just coming to be critical and, you know, uh, uh, you know, I want to be missed if I wasn't here, don't you? You know, I'd hate to say, man, it's good to be back. I ain't been, wasn't able to be here in three months. Missed y'all. Did y'all miss me? Okay, moving right along. No, but listen, the attitude, it, it, it greets people before you do. It fills the room. It's, the therm, it, it, it's literally the thermostat, not the thermometer. It's the thermostat. Heather's here. <laughs> not to put you on the spot or nothing. Everybody, Heather? <laughs> not really. <laughs> it is good to see you. How awesome. So your attitude is the thermostat. It sets the temperature. And so he's telling believers receive with a teachable spirit the word that is implanted in you. And that word that is implanted in you, it is able, it is able to save. Now this gets real good. This really, the root is so sigh coming from sozo. Sozo is to heal, set free, provide for, deliver, make whole. Every time in your Bible it says, daughter, your faith has made you whole, that word is sozo. It's also translated saved many times. Your faith has saved you. Your faith is sozo. But the word so sigh when coming out of sozo deals primarily with this. It takes on the Hebrew into the Greek thought. The, that implanted word is able to, listen, continually deliver. Now that gets really good, and that's most accurate. And I believe the Passion points that out. The implanted word... Notice, it doesn't do nothing until it's received. <laughs> it does, listen, you, you could make all of Brother Copeland's seminars this year. You could volunteer for all the ministry of helps volunteers. I mean, you might even work in the altar call as an usher at Brother Copeland's Southwest Believers Convention. And you can go and you might buy one of his Bibles. I mean, you have to. I mean, 70 bucks, you're getting a man's life up front in the front of the Bible. 
You can buy all of his books. You can have all of Brother Hagin's books. All your Bibles can look like the Rainbow Study Bible. You can have a closet full of notebooks. You can know all Hebrew words and Greek words. But until it's received and goes beyond just hearing it, it's just noise. It's not, it's not saving your soul. And this is a, really a thought we want to point out today before we go. The soul here from the, the root Aramaic word, this is so good. And it makes so much sense of where God has been having us for several messages now, including woman to woman. Uh, uh, when it says soul, it's able to continually deliver. Say continually deliver. Your souls, that soul is dealing from the Aramaic root. It's dealing with this. This is so good. The personality, the emotions, and the thoughts. Receive with meekness a teachable spirit. Receive it now because it is implanted in you. You don't need a new rhema. You don't need another prophetic word spoken over you. You need to receive that which has already been sown and taken root in you. Are you with me? Receive with meekness the implanted word that is able to continually deliver your personality. Ah. It's able to continually deliver huh, your emotions. It's able to continually deliver your thoughts. Man, come on, somebody. Can you say amen? Isn't that good? Listen, things that used to just, anybody know what good old redneck chapped means? Okay, okay. I thought. Things that used to really, I mean, just spin me out into orbit a little bit. Pin my ears back, yeah. Make my jaws salivate. Listen, I still have my stuff, don't get me wrong, but it's far less than it was 21 years ago. And it's far less than it was 10 years ago. And it's far less than it was five years ago. And it's far less than it was three years ago. And it's far less than it was a year ago. And I'm better today than I was 30 days ago. I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because the word that is implanted, it, not me, it is able to continually deliver. See, that never stops. It's a continuation. It's continually able to deliver, this is huge, my personality. I used to say a lot of times, and there is a, a balance, there's a side of, you know, that's, that's my personality versus how maybe that be Daniel's personality. There's some things our personalities are just different. I'm not sure you know that or not, but you need to. <laughs> He's different than I am. I'm thinking Daniel, Stephen, I'm sorry. Uh, your new name's Daniel. By the Holy Ghost, Daniel. Not really. <laughs> I'm playing. Uh, but we're different. We're different. Me and Ty are different in some areas. Me and Caleb are different in some areas, but a whole lot alike in some areas. Me and Mo are a whole lot alike. <laughs> we're being continually delivered of the same things. <laughs> but now listen just because I'm saved yes I'm going to heaven because I believed into Jesus that's the only sin that will send a man to hell actually God's ever only sent one man to hell and that was Jesus hmm? this is the condemnation that light came they, the, the sin is not believing and receiving that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay? But you can be a born-again believer and yet all that born-again 
is all them new things are just inside, but they're, they're bottled up. And you don't ever, you're not ever able to get the new man out because the soul is the governor to all those things in there. That's why Romans 12 said, don't be conformed, be transformed by the renewing, that's the word to refurbish, refurbishing of your mind. There again, the mind is the governor holding all the new man inside. Or he's letting the new man come forth. Are you here? But, but we shouldn't be born again for 20 years and still responding the way we were before we got born again. Come on, church. Huh? Things that used to irk me don't irk me anymore. There's still some things that can get under my skin. There's things, yeah. But it's far less. Huh? Takes a whole lot more of it to push me. Does that make sense? Uh, so he says, receive with meekness a teachable spirit the word that is implanted in you it's there saints the power is there it's able to continually heal your emotions it's there it is able to continually deliver your personality it's there and it's able to continually heal Set free your thoughts. Deliver your thoughts. Boy, that's a good deliverance too. Yes, yes, yes. See, that's not a devil being cast out. That's your thoughts being set free. Yes. That's your thought life being healed. Amen. Yeah. It's able so it has the thought of continuation. It's able to continually set free your personality. Well, that's just how I am. That's the Irish in me. No, that's the carnal in us all. <laughs> Don't talk about Irish. It's St. Patty Day. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's, he's able to continually deliver you Irishmen on St. Patty's Day too. Huh? Huh? I watched the guy try to cheat DJ in cars, and he stopped me. He said, hey, I'm an Irish Indian. You're going to try to cheat me in cars? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Brother Hagin used to minister on, is it the devil or is it the flesh or is it the Irish in you? Well, 90% of the time, it's the flesh. It's not that devil. No. We, try, we lay so much on the devil that he ain't got nothing to do with He's defeated and stripped. He knows it. It's time we know it. <laughs> but it's able to continually deliver. To continually deliver. Say that. Continually deliver. One translation of Passion says, we absorb the word that is implanted in us. Huh? Young's literal translation. In meekness, this is, look here. Greek scholar Robert Young said, in meekness, be receiving the engrafted word. That takes on the same word as be filled. Be being filled. Be being receiving. Continue. Actively receive today, tomorrow, and the next day. Be receiving it. On, not just on Sunday, on Monday. Be receiving the engrafted word that's able to heal your emotions, set free your personality. On Tuesday... Be receiving the implanted word. It's already implanted in you. When you don't want to do the word, receive the implanted word. Come on. And listen, this, is, this helps. Look to the implanted seed of God to set you free. You can't muscle your way through this. This ain't mechanical. You can't do it in the natural. It's just dead works. Am I right? It's dead works. It's, the, it's not just the word. It's the word that is implanted in you. That's the word that has the power to set you free is the word that you have implanted in you. Think of it this way. The word as an implant. 
The implant word. The implanted word. Another translation says the engrafted word. Think about a skin graft. Bible says us Gentiles were grafted into the Spirit, into the anointing, the anointed one by the Spirit. Well, receive the engrafted word. It's been grafted into your spirit. The word spirit. Your spirit, and you get the spirit word working on, not just in, working on the soul. Remember Mark 4 said the sower sows the word. He sows pure, holy, engrafted word among thorns. The thorns didn't say, ah, poof, we got to go when the engrafted word hit. The thorns are still there. The engrafted word was sown on, on rocks. The rocks are there. They don't depart when the word fell on them. And he tells you in Mark chapter 4 all the reasons that the seed didn't work until it gets to the fourth type of soil. And that's the, that's the heart that was dealing with everything that this soul was dealing with, this soul was dealing with, and this soul was dealing with. But it chose to overcome this, 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 that these three soil grounds were not willing to deal with. So the word was choked out. It was robbed immediately. And it, didn't have, it was robbed of its own effect in their own heart. But the fourth ground was willing to overcome the same things that all these other hearts were dealing with and it held to the Word and the Word eventually, enough of it and acting on it, the implanted Word, it ran the rocks out. It got the stony heart out. It got the rock, the, 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 the voice of offense out. Come on. It got the cares of this life. It got the lust for other things that was choking God's holy word out and bringing it to no effect. It, 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 it washed out man's traditions yes. and brought forth a harvest some 30, 60, 100 fold. Good. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. But I just want to encourage you that this is a, a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, there, there, there may be seasons that, listen, when the Lord, by His Spirit, is really going to uh, put light on something, to just illuminate it to you, so you can see just how bad you need freedom in that area. That's scriptural. The law was given to highlight sin. Huh? So that you could see, you cannot live this. Because the Bible says, if you fall in one point... 613 laws plus the big 10. It was designed that no man could do it to force a person and have their eyes open and say, God, I can't live this. I need grace. Ha! Jesus is coming. People have had a thought. Please remind me. I don't want to lose this. Uh, when the Lord gets ready to illuminate so that you can just see just really how bad you need freedom in that area. Because listen to me, listen, newsflash, you don't even know you're doing it till the spirit of revelation reveals you're doing it. I know it's true. I've been there a bunch of times. And everybody around you knew it and was just loving you through it. And then the, and the Lord just shows you what a, what, a, what a Balaam's donkey you've been acting. <laughs> well, the Lord saved me right there. <laughs> Tom stuttered and said it a different way, but I'm not Tom. <laughs> and then the Lord illuminates it. The law was given to illuminate sin. That was its perfect purpose, was to, was to illuminate, bring, magnify the sin. 613 laws in the Bible says if you fail in one point, you've broken them all. Too many people really have not, under, have not received it as it was said. If you fall in one point, they've had this idea of, well, you know, if you do about 50% of it, blessed are you in the city, blessed are you in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed is your storehouse. That ain't what he said. He said if you observe all the law. People ain't read it like that. I've heard teachers on TV that believe we're still under the law. Bless their darling hearts. 
I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't a Jew for one. I've never been given the law, never was under the law. I'm a Gentile. Huh? But even them that still want to be under the law, like Paul dealt with in Galatians, they're so quick to get on. And, but if you observe to do all that I've commanded in the book of the law, blessed are you in the city, blessed are you. I will take sickness from you. I will not put this. I will not allow this. Listen, hey, Mr. Teacher, you ain't living all the 613 laws, I promise. No man never has except Jesus. Because if you fall in one point, you're guilty of breaking them all. Aren't we glad for Jesus? And listen, our, our Torah is this. Love one another the same way I've loved you. There's your Torah. There's the New Testament Torah. Because listen, you cannot live the love of God out without fulfilling all 613 of them laws. If I'm loving you the, way, the same way God loves me, I won't covet your wife. Huh? I won't covet your stuff. I won't manipulate you to bring to, for leverage. To, I won't try to tweak your will to conform to mine. See, that's not love. Huh? Love is not self-seeking. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians 13. So anyway, listen now. When the Holy Spirit gets ready to bring light, you will go through a window of a season where I mean you are just, you feel raw. Huh? You feel turned inside out. True transformation. Because this is inner man stuff dealing with the soul man. Are you listening or did you go, did you go home on me already? Okay. You'll feel raw. You'll feel turned inside out. It's because the illumination of God is putting focus on there. And he'll reveal it to you. And then you're, you're going to have knowing of just how often you do that. And then you're going to get the opportunity to give shame to God when the devil tries to shame you and show you what a sorry little wascal you are. No, you get to give it to God, but you're made aware of it. And that awareness is what makes you realize the next time you start to go there, the Spirit of God and your spirit go, uh-uh, uh-uh, I've been freed of that. I don't have to do that to get my way. I don't seek my way. I seek the Lord, and He, and, and he brings the best way to me. Are you with me? The Bible says that a, a, a true leader in a church, he must not be bent on his way. He may have the way he believes it needs to be done, but he's, 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 the Bible says he's, he's open to other ideas. doesn't say he's going to go that way all the time, but he's open to other ideas. And, and if the Spirit of God, you know, that, that is a, that's a good way. It seems good. He's willing to go that way. I'm not talking compromise, okay? That's not what we're talking about. But thank God for the spirit of revelation, the spirit of illumination. Let's, let's end with Proverbs. We... Uh, so do you see yet that the, that the implanted word is already there? It's, it's implanted into you. You're not, he didn't say receive something that you don't yet have. He said receive the engrafted word. It's already implanted. It's already in, in, engraved into your nature. And what is it able to do? I want to make sure we're, we're, we're getting something. What is it able to do? Continually deliver set free, save my personality, my emotions, and my thoughts. And let's end with Proverbs chapter 4, please. You getting something out of this? Proverbs 4. I mean, listen, some of the things that the devil could use to bait me with ain't even bait. I mean, it smells like stink bait now. Anybody ever been know what I'm talking about right there? Things that used to could bait you and was true temptation. It's no longer a temptation. Raise your hand. I'll be the first. 
not, not even a temptation. Why? Personality's been set free. Emotions have been healed and set free. Thought life has been healed, set free, renovated. Isn't that wonderful, y'all, somebody, huh? I mean, what I used to jump on like a June bug. Now it's a stink bug. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what used to be true, legit temptation ain't even temptation no more. Why? Well, I outgrew it. No, you didn't. The Word you received with the teachable spirit long enough, you continued to do it. Therefore, the continuing implanted Word continued to set you continually free. Hey, forget Proverbs. Go back to James. We're going to end right there where we were. It is. I just feel the unction of the Lord taking us back there. So that's what you do. When the Lord unctions, you go with it. We'll wrap it up right here. It's 12, 11, so. Worship was so wonderful and pure. Thank y'all for everything. So verse 24, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Receive, say I receive, I receive. with meekness the implanted word. It is able. It is able to so sigh, continually deliver your soul from the Aramaic. It's it is able to continually deliver, continually deliver your personality, your emotions, and your thoughts. But be doers of the word. I wrote above the word word, implanted. Be doers of that implanted word and not hearers only. This is huge. Listen, deceiving yourself. You ever found yourself, I pray there's more than one or two honest ones in here today. You ever found yourself praying about things? Lord, I'm believing, Lord. I've done, I'm a tither, I'm a this. And you know, you, you know, you got the door of sin open. And you know it. Don't play dumb with the Holy Ghost. Raise your hand. Come. Isn't it something? Deceiving yourself. And that's the deception is you, you're hearing it and you're hearing it and you're hearing it and you're hearing it and you're hearing it. And I'm telling you, I, I, I say this, I try to make it sound, I mean it humbly. You know that you're doing the word in all these areas. But the sin that so easily besets you, that looks different from this one. And this, but that sin. And listen, it's not that God is counting it up, but what it does, when you're trying to believe God, it's robbing you of confidence. Huh? You don't have confidence to go before God. Well, you have to remember that God's greater than your heart when your heart is condemning you. But listen to me. Listen, your sin is not breaking your relationship with God but it does mar the fellowship of the relationship hmm? is there any married couple in here that as much as you love each other there was just at times I don't want to be around you hmm? time Sarah thank you all for your you were the first ones with your hands up come on down you're the next contestant <laughs> Have you ever been there? Sure you have. I love her with all my heart, but I just need a moment in my man cave without her in it. Hmm? And I'm the type, I want to be quiet. And maybe, you know, if your spouse is one of those that follow you around, we ain't going to talk. We are going to talk. You're going to talk to me. Listen, you jamming me up. I'm telling you, we're going to have a domestic. <laughs> we need to talk. We need to talk. You're going to talk to me. Pastor says communicate. Girl. <laughs> communicate, communicate. Huh? You locking me down. Listen, I don't want to be around you for a minute. Why? Our fellowship is marred. Now listen, our relationship is, is settled. Huh? But our, what we do hinders the fellowship 
of that which is settled. So that's the same way sin is. He doesn't say, all right, you're not saved. You're not my child. No. And listen, God is not touchy. He's not fretful. He's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't count the sin. But it mars your confidence, it mar, which mars the fellowship. See? And so that's why you, you, you want to be careful that you don't practice certain things. It mars the fellowship, which robs your confidence to go before the Lord. The devil wants your confidence. So let's finish this. So he says, but not doing the word. Listen, I'm not talking about being legalistic, nailing it, nailing it, nailing it. Oh, don't ever fall. Don't you do the word. This is not religion. You're doing the implanted word. You're doing the word you're able to do by now. The implanted word. You're a doer of that, otherwise you deceive yourself. You bind the devil, but the power ain't there. Come on now. Huh? You lay hands on your children, but the anointing isn't there. Come on. Huh? You rebuke the devil, but the Holy Ghost don't take it up in you. You've deceived yourself. And listen, the way out is repentance. Every time, repentance, brokenness and repentance before God. Thank God we can. You still here? Be doers of the word, the implanted word. I want that to be very clear to you. We're not talking legalism if you nail it in every single point. No, be doers of the implanted word. Be doers of the word you know to do by now. That's the word you're doing. To whom much is given, much is required. Come on. Right? You know to do it, and you know how to do it by now. Now it's time. God, will, There'll come a day, God said, it's time. It's time. It's time. Got real quiet and sober all of a sudden in here. But listen, you can't go deeper into the glory without it being, you know what time it is by now. That's just fact. That's Bible fact. You can't come more into the holiness of God with the same old things you was doing 20 years ago and think that they're not going to get burnt up in the glory. Come on, church. Give me more of you, Lord. Give me more of you. Okay, let me have less of you. That's just the fact. That's the reciprocal. You see what I'm saying? We're winding this up. Please don't, don't rush me. But be doers of that implanted word and not just a hearer. That means that's possible. Been in church 50 years, hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. Can talk it, can run to Shonda, can hoop, can run. No, I've no saints. It's not. It's not. It's it's dangerous to know how to dress it. I was raised as a young man in a in a in a certain church. They could talk it. They could dress it. They could. Ha, they could. Yeah. What's that doing for you? It's doing it, and I'm talking about doing it when it's the last thing you feel like doing. That's when you're pulling on the engrafted word. When you don't want to forgive, and by faith you, Lord, I give them to you in the name of Jesus. As far as I'm concerned, I release them, and they are forgiven, Lord. That's, that's your kid, Lord. They're not my, my, my responsibility. That's, that's your son. That's your daughter, and I, I release them. See, that, that does me good to do that. You're releasing them, but you're doing yourself a favor. Huh? When you don't feel like doing the word, you, you act on. All right, what's this? 
But be doers of the word, not hearers only, or else you will deceive yourself. If anyone is a hearer of the implanted word and not a doer, he is like a man that looks at his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself. It's interesting. Well, anyway. He observes himself and he goes away and he immediately forgets what kind of man he was according to that mirror. But he who, number one, looks into the perfect law of liberty. He just called the word of God the perfect law of liberty. He who, number one, looks continually into the perfect law of liberty, and he continues doing that. And he's not, number two, a forgetful hearer, but he is, number three, a doer of the work. That person will be blessed. That's God's, that's God's stamp on it right there. He will be blessed. Number one, he continues to look into the perfect law of liberty. Number two, he's not a forgetful hearer. If you just hear it, isn't it something how you will forget it? Huh? Number one, he looks continually into the perfect law. He continues in it. Read Psalm 119. It's very interesting. It's the longest psalm in the book of Psalms. And every verse he says something about the statutes, the commands, the ways, or the word of God. Every verse. Every verse. He's not a forgetful hearer, but he's a doer of the work. It is a wonderful sensation and a wonderful reward when you know I overcame. Come on, man, this is real, man. I, I didn't give in to that. And I mean when the, the peaceable fruit. I mean, I mean big smack in that fruit, man. Come on. The peaceable fruit of righteousness in God rises up. And the Spirit of God does reward your spirit. And you know that was better than giving in ever felt. Huh? How many of you know what I'm talking about? And you know that the Spirit of God was rewarding. It's like, man, high five, chest bump, boom, with the Holy Ghost. It's true. Because it's like I overcame, man. I used to give into that. That used to rob me of sleep for three days, man. I used to have blood when I'd use the restroom dealing with that thing. And I, I overcame it. I overcame that thing. And the, and the Spirit of God rewarded me for it. What are you doing? You took hold of the crown of life. Blessed is he that endures temptation, test, trial, pressure. For when he has been proven, he shall, that's right then, that's not in glory someday, he shall receive the crown of life, zoe. He steps, it's another step into this, the kingdom thing. Huh? But it comes from being a doer of the word. There's nothing, listen, more sickening. And David deals with it. David said, I hate the double-minded. And the first double-minded man you deal with is, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. That's the first double-minded man you always start with. Huh? I hate the scorner. Well, start with the scorner in you. You always start there. And really, that's the start and finish line. <laughs> You're just your responsibility. They're God's responsibility. But there's nothing quite as sickening, honestly, as a person that can talk the word, talk scripture, put the name of Jesus in their mouth, try to say, thus saith the Lord at times, try to give you advice, try to give you counsel. You won't give me counsel. 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 <laughs> but listen to me. They're just carnal. The Holy Ghost doesn't take one word they say up. Listen, if, I have, if somebody has counsel for me or I have counsel for you and it's really delivered, like the book of Proverbs says, a, a word in the due season. It, I mean, it's, it's fully cooked and you know you have God's timing and God's leading. And this is going to, and you're saying it to bless them, not to tear them down, not just to expose flesh, not to expose sin. That's not the Spirit of God. You're coming because you've, 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 you've bathed it in prayer and you've prayed it through. 
And God, listen to me, if God gives you a word for somebody and you pray it through right, it's going to heal you on the way to, to delivering that word to them. I've been that guy. God, I knew God was sending me to talk to a man. And I'm telling you, if you enjoy it, you're in the wrong spirit. It'll be all you can do to go to somebody and take a, a loving rebuke. If it's the Spirit of God and you're in the right spirit, I mean, you'll act, God, use somebody else, please. Not because you're intimidated, but I'm going to tell you something. When you're in the spirit, there is no intimidation. I've looked in people's eyes and said something by the Spirit of God. I'm talking about that could flog me like a freaking rag doll. You don't care when you're in the Spirit. You just say it, bam. Especially if it's, it's, it's the prophetic anointing. Bow, and it's the love of God, but it's sharp. Bam, bam, bam. And you just move and minister. And after it, you go back and watch the live feed, and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Like, what you owe Jesus in about? Exactly. Yeah. You're, right. oh, yeah. You're supposed to do that. You're supposed to yield to me. Amen. You leave them with me. Right, Tough guy doesn't intimidate Jesus. No. Huh? He done dealt with legion. Hello. Huh? <laughs> he, the Spirit of God, see, he's trying to set people free. If it is the anointing and the anointing is at work, we're having revival here for just a second. Stay with me. If the anointing is involved, it will look like this. It'll be bringing the good news to people in an area that they've not yet heard the good news. That's the poor. It will be opening the eyes where you're still blind, and I'm still blind in an area. It will be setting the captive free and, and, and ordering people to liberty. Yeah, yeah. That's the anointing. It will not be upholding and pandering and stroking the flesh and keeping people carnal as they were six months at a time and just staying. No, it will. The Spirit said he'll get straight up in the grill of the flesh oh, yeah. in Galatians 5. Oh, yeah. And thank God he does, man. He wants us free. Hallelujah. For our better. He wants us more delivered today than we were last year. And listen, our personality... I used to say that a lot. Well, you know what? I'm a Holloman and a stutter. That's just the way we are. Show me where that says that. You always take everything back to God. Don't, don't settle for what man has said. Well, you know us. We just my way or the highway, man. You freaking get lost if you don't like it. Well, they may just get lost and you might be alone. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah. Well, I'm a Denton on one side and a Callaway on the other. I'm a Caladent. I'm a Dentaway. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Sarah, same thing. Right. Big Deb, Heavy D. On listen to me. Where did God say that? Right. Who told you that? Amen. That's good thinking, isn't it? We're winding this up, I promise. Listen, I'm not going to say it again. I'll be here all day if God has me here. <laughs> Listen, we are who God's made us to be. We are new creatures in the Spirit. And that newness in the Spirit is wanting to continually deliver our personality. You know, you know the Bible says when you learn to lose your life in him, you find your true life. And that word life is suke, dealing with the soul. When you learn to lose your personality, lose what you feel like you got to uphold and defend and lose it in him. I just want to lose myself in you. Remember that, that song? You end up finding your true life. And it's like, you know what? That hermit... I really kind of kind of like people. <laughs> yeah, I like my alone time still, but listen, Jody used to just say, I, if I could just get you there, but it was getting me out of that shell. I mean, it was like, come on, lube him up. Spray some WD-40 on him. You can just get him out of the shell and just get him to the party. He'll be the life of the party. 
I get on a cruise boat, I ask everybody, where are you from? Exactly. Where are you from? Joe, she's from, she's from Israel. Lay hands on me, lay hands on me. Exactly. I'm, so, I'm like that all over the boat. I, I introduce myself to everybody. Yeah. I love that. I love people. Yeah. Have no but listen, that's a far stretch from the guy that was just ate up in shame and ate up, smooth up in guilt and condemnation. That couldn't look nobody, just, just beat down. Wes will tell me in the gym, you're not that same Jason from 1901, first and K. Come on. No, you're not. That's good to hear. Yes. That helps me. Yeah. We encourage each other. Me and Dee at the gym. Me and we all. But listen, you are free indeed on the inside of you. It's just the soul guy that has to be continually delivered in my personality. Huh? Delivered. Set free and healed in my emotions. Set free and healed continually in my thoughts. Things that I used to could not not think about. Just there. It was there. Anybody ever been there? They don't have that stronghold in my thought life no more. Huh? Now, I still have my stuff. I still at times take extra magnesium to help get the mind quiet when I go to sleep. I understand what torment and dreams are and just, just radical, dumb dreams that, that fight for a good night's sleep. But it's not strongholds anymore. It's not the tormentor living in there and, and getting me down when I'm asleep. Are you here? But he's continually delivering us, continually setting us free, continually healing our personality, our emotions, and our thought life. What happens then? The new man in Christ begins to shine. The God, the Jason God made Jason to be begins to come out. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, y'all? Huh? The Jason that, that God made me to be. Huh? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you can cry, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> the, the Jason that God made me to be, he comes out, you know. You don't have to hide and lie to uphold who you are. And it's a lie. You ain't even that, and you know you ain't all that. Huh? It's just lies. The enemy gets us just living out of a lie. You've gained all your friends through lies. You gain your boyfriend through lying. Huh? You got them thinking something that you ain't none of that. And they'd love you more if they knew the truth. Huh? Just be you. Nobody can be you as good as you can be you. God made you to be you. And you is made in his likeness and his image. And he wants you. He don't want to fake you. And I tell you what, I don't want to fake you. And I don't, I can't give you a fake me. You know? That's why love is what holds us together. We're going to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to, we're, listen, we've done it. We're, we're still doing it. We go through seasons where, just for example, I think Miss Connie's in one of her seasons. <laughs> Isn't it true? We want, we want to show extra love we to her. Cover. We cover her. We're, she, I don't know, but I just feel like she might be in a season. It'll be shorter because she's growing. It'll get shorter and shorter. Come on, y'all. This is what we do. We're a family. Where, Brother Ty, where was Ryan last Sunday? I don't know. Let's call and check on him. I want to make sure the devil ain't harassing him. Come on, this is what we do. I'm telling you real talk. We do it. I called him, but I couldn't get a hold of him. And I just want to know he's okay. I want to know that devil's not whooping on his head again. Am I right? It's good, isn't it? Wait, listen to me. When you can't hardly believe for yourself, you need people believing in you and for you and with you. Amen. Have you seen Big Matt lately? Yeah. You, you think, I, listen, I'm not exaggerating. That's, that's what we talk about at home <laughs> is you. What about so-and-so? Have, have you seen where was so-and-so? I haven't seen him in two weeks. They ain't been here in two weeks. In our opinion, that's MIA. We need, we need to know. 
If you've left, just let us know. But we need to know where you're at. You see what I'm saying? Because we care. Yeah. We care. We care. We've been there. And we're going to see each other go through seasons. Boy, I tell you what, Pastor, just... He just didn't smile quite as much all day. It's been that way. Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Think maybe something. <laughs> we need to pray for him. Maybe he's in one of his seasons. Maybe the Lord's setting him free in his personality in the next, next layer. Come on, y'all. Let's pray for some. They just seem, seem real touchy the last couple times I've been around them. Just extra sensitive and touchy. I mean, just kind of woof. I'll tell you, it, it, you want to be careful. Now, I'm speaking from experience in, in my personality. It's easy in those settings. Somebody snap a little bit at you for you just done with you. Done. 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 Anybody else that can be a dunner? Raise your hand if you can be a dunner. Come on. But aren't you glad that Jesus in us acts like Jesus? Jesus don't say, I'm done with you. That song that we... You showed me that one day. It says that who could allow himself to be hurt and allow you to hurt him until you found your healing. That's what Jesus does. He allows you to continually hurt him and hurt him and blame him and yell at him and blame him and question his integrity, question his covenant, question his kindness, question his mercy until you find your healing and then you find out he really is all that. And he stays with his arms open the whole time. And that's what we're called to as Christians. Huh? To stay open to each other. Love believes the best. I choose to believe the best about you. I know you choose to believe the best about me. So as we keep entering in, we see each other in a season, we cover. Huh? I've been blessed. We're going to end today in a real non-churchy way. Are you okay with that? I've been wanting to do this all week. Listen, we've gathered in the name. We've, we're still in the name. And we are the church. And, 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 and the line is just honor. That's the only line we don't violate with God. So he's not real concerned with how we end a service. Okay? God bless you. Goodbye. Amen.